How you doing? I'll let you introduce yourself to everybody. Thanks for doing this interview. I am Laura van Londerzele. I'm a Belgian model uh, and I work in New York as well. Okay. Can you tell me how you got started? I got started when I was, I think, 17. Uh, my friend used to model and she said I had a good face, so she introduced me to an agency and uh, yeah, I got accepted. And so that's how I. I and you were 17 years old? Yeah, I was 17 years Are old. Are you still currently with that agency now? No, no. I decided to switch agency and yeah, I'm very happy with my agency right now. Okay. And you are, what, what is the market like in Belgium? Is it, because you're always working from what I see, do you feel as though you work a lot? Are you represented in other European markets as well? Yeah, so I work in Belgium, um, I work in Milan and I work in New York. The Belgium market is very commercial. Um, it's definitely not like New York, you don't have the really big brands. Uh, you don't really have a lot of like big money jobs. So it's a bit more difficult to uh, find work as a model, as okay. a full-time model. So you would say pay is more in the U.S. and other European markets or because of all the markets you're represented in, what market pays the most? Definitely New York. New York pays yeah, the most. Yeah, definitely New York. I think uh, the worst was Milan. Milan. Yeah. So, I hear that a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really bad. I think for a showroom, I was paid like 150 a day, which is almost nothing. Um, in Belgium, you don't really have big markets, so I think New York is like, yeah. But you were saying Belgium was more commercial. Do you feel as though, because commercial sometimes can pay more than fashion because it's on TV or it's a speaking role or is video involved? No, it's more like, well, it is, I mean, it's commercial as in you have like stores, uh, like a Lola and Lisa, like a shoe store. It's it's not really big money jobs. It's not like in New York. The commercial work in New York is not the same as in Belgium, I feel like. You're represented in a lot of markets. Do you find a difference in style, uh, be it photography, makeup, lighting, or the posing? Yes, I think in Belgium, it's more conservative. Uh, they don't really take a lot of risk. The makeup is very, like, clean and very well sweet and very commercial. Um, New York is definitely different. Uh, they go bolder and uh, yeah, there is just so much more and they dare to create stuff. And in Belgium, they really just look at New York or these big cities like Milan or Paris um, and then they just recreate, but they don't really do something themselves. That's how I feel in Belgium anyway. What advice would you have for a model wanting to be represented in another country? Because from what I understand, do you travel here on your own dime in the hopes to get work? And could a trip be a complete wash or do you always come out saying, OK, this was worth my time? No, no, it can definitely. Yeah, no. Um, I had times where I went to a country, for example, New York or Milan and I don't book any jobs, so that's mm -hmm. very frustrating. Uh, but sometimes I go and it goes very well, and then I do a lot of jobs, but uh, yeah, sometimes uh, that's not the case, and that's just a risk you want to take. I want to take that risk. I don't want to be stuck at one place. Uh, I want to see if I can work in Milan or work in New York or work in Belgium, and if that season they don't want me or I'm not getting so many jobs and that's okay, then I just... Go with, is, flow. <laughs> go with the flow. Go with the flow. You just out here. <laughs> How does pay work in other countries? Because for me, a lot of my jobs are net 30. Is it longer when you're in another country working on a visa or is it net 30? How does pay work? Uh, pay, well, in New York, it is indeed net 30. Uh, I get my money really fast. In Milan, that's a different story. I think, longer. yeah, there's a lot of like problems with, I don't know why, um, but uh, I did a job in April or I got my statement that I like, I think I worked there for like three months. I got my statement and I'm still waiting until this day for my money. Okay. What, how's taxes handled? 
because you're working in other countries, other states, things like that, like how do you have a bookkeeper that handles your accounting for all these different countries so that you pay your taxes? Uh, I pay my taxes here in America and then I pay my taxes in Belgium and when I work in Milan uh, it's it goes through my agency in Belgium so my Milan agency and my uh, mother agency in Belgium they communicate um, but I pay my taxes in Belgium I don't have to do anything for for Milan okay how often are you working when you're back in Belgium I prefer to work as much as possible so that's why sometimes I also work for Rick Owens as a seller like I do other stuff as well besides modeling um, but yeah you also have bridal market in Belgium um, you have uh, e-commerce so I well I hope I can just work one or two weeks in a month as a model and then I mean that would be good so when you come to the U.S., does your agent handle any of your lodging or they say, hey, get here, get your flight, get a place to stay? Or is model apartment still a thing? Do they try to pair you up with other models that are traveling into the country? How does that work? Um, in New York, I paid for my own flight. I, um, well, my friend lives here, so I'm staying with her. And they are not really, uh, yeah. I have to pay for myself, but when I got in, when, when I went to Milan, they put me in a model apartment. But after that, I was like, I'm not going to stay in the model apartment. I'm going to rent something myself through Airbnb. Yeah, I hear bad yeah. stories about model apartments. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's not good. So today we were shooting, and you made an interesting statement. You said that red is not your natural color. So can you explain the story about how you became a redhead? Yes. So normally uh, I am blonde. Uh, my agency signed me when I was blonde, but then a couple of months uh, later they asked me to change my hair because I was looking too dull and boring. Mm. And so they said with my skin tone, which is very pale, they said that ginger would look or redhead would look uh, much better. Um, and I was, I didn't want to do it at first, but then they said that I signed the contract and they had my best interests. And so, uh, I had to change my hair. And so that's what I did. And it's been seven years now. Wait, you said, no, uh, I was, was 18. Yeah. So like nine years already. Nine years. Yeah. So when you look in the mirror, at yourself, do you say this is me or do you still remember a time where you were blind and this does not seem like yourself or your hair? No, I see myself. You see yourself. This is, you yeah, yeah. I, lo I love the hair color. I think it looks great. Uh, a lot of people love this hair color. I get a lot of jobs because of this hair color. Yeah. Uh, the competition is less because of this hair color, so I, I, I love it. I'm also in this agency because of my hair color. With you working in so many different markets, you come across a lot of different languages, a lot of different cultures, a lot of different everything. How many languages do you speak? I speak three. So I speak Flemish, French, and English. Um, I tried learning German, but I forgot, so yeah. When you're working with photographers whose natural language is, you know, not yours and is to that particular country, what obstacles and hurdles do you have? Because I'm sure listening to me talk is a couple of times where you're like, I don't know what this guy's saying. Or yeah. He's talking too fast or yeah. whatever the case may be. Uh, well, I think what challenges do you have? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, well, words, like some, some terms that you use that are slang or I don't know, things that people use in New York or in Milan. I mean, it's, it's sometimes difficult to understand, but uh, I think I, I speak okay, uh, but it's not like people actually like speak English as their mother language. Also humor, it's different. Uh, yeah, I think that's the, the biggest issue, but other, otherwise I'm just, I'm fine. Is it hard to connect with a photographer to create images when you don't speak the same language? Well, you don't speak the same language. 
Yes. It is. Yes. I had a photographer in Milan. Uh, he didn't. Sp he didn't spoke a word English, and I did not speak Italian, and so he was just doing gestures, and that's kind of weird because you don't really know what he wants, um, and yeah, that that was a bit tricky. Yeah. In that situation, does mood boards and reference images play a large part? Yes. I know a lot of photographers don't like to use them, and I can understand why you don't want to show someone else's work all mm. the time to get an image that you want. You want to be able to talk the model through that. Right. But would the photographers in that situation use mood boards or any type of reference image? Uh, that would help. Yeah. If you don't speak the same language. Yes. Have they would. done that? What? Use that mood board he, and a reference he used, image. Yeah, he, he used uh, cool. an image of oranges with like <laughs> the thing that I had to throw oranges and so he showed a picture of People so throwing oranges, oranges, yeah. And so I like, understood okay. that Throw that's oranges. what he wanted, yeah. Yeah, yeah it helps. <laughs> <laughs> what, what advice do you have for new models starting up? Um, definitely be confident. Uh, don't take it too seriously uh, and take care of your body. Um, travel, like try different markets, don't just stick to one market, like try to go out there, go to New York if you have the chance, or go to Milan or go to Paris, uh, and uh, yeah, have a lot of experience. And When you say take care of your body, every time I look at your stories, it's like you're in a gym. I mean, you, <laughs> you go, when you're on vacation, you're in a gym, when you're not on vacation, you're yeah. in a gym. What does your workout routine look like? Um, well, hit workouts, Pilates, and uh, I love to run, and that's it. That's all I do. Hit hit workouts, Pilates, and running. Every day. Not every day, but like five times a week, five if I can. Week. More or less five times a week. Do you have any advice <laughs> for models just starting out on set etiquette or how to, you know, show up to a job, be a professional? Did you always? have those skills and if not where did you learn them from no i definitely did not have those skills uh i was very chaotic and uh i came late a oh, lot really? yes and um i didn't really know how to communicate with my agency and uh yeah no i definitely uh was not very professional in the beginning i only learned that a bit later in in my career how, how did you learn it <laughs> Um, because I fucked, like, because I fucked up before, like, I saw agencies were getting mad at me, and, uh, uh, yeah, I just had to change it up a little bit, and so I, well, and also I was a bit young, I was a bit overwhelmed, so I just learned to, uh, be more professional by, uh, taking my career more seriously, and I think that girls should do the same when they show up. Uh, it's their career, um, you have a responsibility towards the client and towards your agency and so you, re you really need to get yourself together when you go and show up at your job. What was the moment where it just clicked? Where you said, hey, you know what, I'm messing up, where you dropped from the agency, did you lose out on a job, did somebody complain back to your agents? Yeah, yeah, I, I was dropped from my agency in New York and my boyfriend broke up. At the same day, at the same day. And so I was in New York and I was like, what is happening? Okay. <laughs> and so that's when I was like, okay, I need to get my shit together and uh, start focusing on. When was this? My career. Um, before COVID, no, long before COVID, like 2019. Okay, so you've been on the right path for a while now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you hone your skills and perfect your craft and learn new techniques as a model? Um, I think Instagram, I think I watch a lot of things through Instagram. You can see a lot of images and videos and everything and then you see and you, yeah, you learn from it. Uh, and also just experience, like photographers will tell you what works and what does not work. Um, yeah, I think Instagram and photographers give me the most input. And speaking of working with photographers and testing and working on your craft, you mentioned that you only wait for photographers to reach out to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're not actively 
you know, seeking out <laughs> new photographers to work with and things like that. What? No. So what if you go months or a year and no photographer reaches out to you? Are you then only relying on the job to get better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, no, I, I just don't want to reach out to a photographer because I feel like a photographer should should be inspired by me and wants to work with me and not the other way around. Mm, that's, that's a good way to look yeah, at it. Yeah, it's like because good. photographers, they shoot with so many people that they just like, I mean, they people ask to shoot with a photographer, but the photographer maybe is not very interested in that person. And I want someone to ask me and be interested in me and... and that's, you know that's what a I'm good trying point. to no, say? I know exactly what you're saying because yeah. I, I think about the models I want to shoot, the work that we produce when I'm really intrigued by their look. And then, you know, it's a little different where I'm like, mm. hey, I have a free day and so and so reached out. Let me just shoot the person because I'm free or something like that. So yeah. I, I can understand yeah. that passion that has to be there and the appreciation yeah. for the other person. I mean, I would be very sad if. If uh, if no photographer reaches out to me in like two years, it, I mean, I would be very sad, but I would never go and, and ask a photographer uh, to, sh to please shoot me, like, no. Do you do paid portfolio shoots at all? Because I know you said you had one potentially coming up, but sometimes to shape your book in a particular way, you have to pay yeah, for the yeah. photographers to shoot in that style. Yes, um, my agency actually set that up uh, recently um, and they um, discussed the price with the photographer so I didn't really have to pay it they will probably take it from you pay uh, later yeah and yeah just, and that was a paid shoot so I actually technically I have to pay for that shoot how did you feel about the images we, we don't have to say like names or anything like that okay. but how did you feel about the I like uh, them you like them I like them yeah yeah he was good was it a beauty test a fashion test it was test? more beauty it was oh, no a fashion he, he wanted it to be high fashion um but yeah he did the styling the hair and the makeup himself I mm. feel like the hair could have been a little different uh, but other than that, he like he he sent me all the pictures I could choose my pictures, and then he was going to uh, f like photo um, retouch, retouch them, retouch them. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any advice for photographers that are working with models? Uh, to do their research about the model they're working with, connect with them some a little bit more sometimes instead of. When you say just research, what, yeah. do you, what do you mean? Like see what the who, how the model is, who the model is. Uh, try to understand her character a little bit when you look at her portfolio or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Uh, I feel like it creates a clear image of how the person is a little bit. Maybe that's interesting for a photographer to. Do you find that photographers, and I, I don't know if this is what you mean by research, but. Do you find the photographers are trying to fit you into like square into a round hole, like fit you into a space that you don't work in? Or what are these photographers going to find from this research that will help your photo shoot? Yeah, I feel like sometimes they should find like if you see a model and the model doesn't really fit in the idea, you shouldn't really stick with that model, but you should find someone who sticks in the idea or maybe change the idea to fit with the model. Sometimes I have I come and I think this is really not for me or this isn't really uh, this is really not my style of I mean of course you need to adapt to every situation because you're a model and you should be like a chameleon and you should do everything but like you kind of feel when this model is not really fit for that kind of job totally understand so now that you've been doing this for a couple years now what still gets you excited about the industry? Well, still traveling, um, fashion. Fashion. Yeah, yeah. It it, it get I mean, it keeps getting interesting. It's very interesting to see how everything is like uh, changing, how the models are changing, how the fashion is changing, how uh, the world is changing. I think mm -hmm. um, meeting new models, meeting younger models. Meeting older models, uh, meeting new teams. Um, yeah, I think that's the most interesting about my job. As as a model, do you have 
a vision sometimes for a photo shoot? Because I know sometimes, you know, we share mood boards back and forth, mm -hmm. but has there ever been a time where you like, hey, I want to execute this vision or do you always trust the photographer to take a good photo of you? I always trust the photographer. I know it's that, yeah, I really almost, yeah. Always? I, yeah, because I'm not very artistic. I really am not. I, okay. I think it's very, very difficult to be like, oh, I have this vision where I want this and this. And also, I don't think it's my, uh, I don't think I'm in that position to tell you my vision. I also don't have a vision, but if I would have a vision, I don't think I should be the one telling you that vision. I feel like the photographer is a creative mind and the model is the one who is like executing it. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting take. Um, there are times where a model comes to me with a whole shoot plan, like styling, team they want to work with, and it feels very collaborative. Uh. And then there are models like yourself that I work with, and I sense the trust you have in me. Yeah. Because like, I can be like, how about this, how about that? And you're just like, yes, whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, and then when, you, when you hit me with the yes, whatever you want, I know you're done talking about it. It's just like, <laughs> stop messaging me about this photo shoot, figure it the hell out, like, leave me alone. Cause like, <laughs> that's a very, that's a very like you thing. Yes, whatever you want. And like a couple other people do that too. And I know what that means, so. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I'm just not creative. So I just trust you completely. And I'm yeah. just like, whatever, whatever you want. It's yeah. fine. Like I, I trust you and I know it's gonna be great, so. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you ever, <laughs> when you're working with photographers, like some models are like, hey, it has to be a full team. We need styling. We need hair and makeup. And you and I, we haven't done a shoot like that yet. No. I, I would love to do a shoot where it's a full team. But I think for a, what we're doing a lot of the times, it's just, hey, come through. Let's shoot. Yeah. Let's make some images. Yeah. Where's your preference at? And how do you feel about both types of shoot? And before you answer that question, I, I just would say like, for me, sometimes I love the full team, but then I don't want the pressure of having to like really perform and really nail the shot. And there are times where, you know, if I wasn't getting paid, if I was getting paid, like I would still be taking photos and I would still be hanging around beautiful people. I find them interesting and I would still want to just capture that. and. Sometimes these photo shoots that we do in those moments is very simple and I like that. So mm. how do you feel about the team, no team and still trying to create something good? I feel like um, the um, I, I like what we do. Like I really appreciate what we do without the team. I don't really need a team. I like a team because you feel like you're dressed up. So you feel more in the role of model. And now when we walk, maybe I feel a little bit more like myself, but that's good as well. Like, I think uh, both are completely fine with me. Um, a team just gives you more, I mean, yeah, you're, you're fully glammed up. It's like a full glam look and you have the styling, so you don't really have to think about much and you just need to get the perfect shot and then the images are really pretty. Uh, but the same what we do now, like I feel like we always have beautiful pictures and it's very casual and uh, yeah, it, there is no pressure. True. Okay. What's next in your career and what do you have coming up? Where would you like to see things go for you? Um, I am gonna be in New York for now and um, yeah, let's see, let's see how this month is gonna go. And then I know I already have Bridal coming up, which is going to be after January. Um, yeah, that's a whole Bridal marketing that's going to be in like a couple of European countries. Um, I still don't know if I'm going to do Fashion Week in January, though. Uh, I feel like it's a bit hard for me. Uh, you have to be extremely skinny and that would that it was easy when I was like 19. It's not easy now. Like I just don't see the point in losing like 10 kilo uh, and have like a very stressful period with maybe jobs or maybe no jobs. So I don't know about January yet. Um, but yeah, I keep modeling and uh, yeah. Do you have any 
dream clients you work towards or goals that you want to accomplish within the industry or you just want to keep working? I just want to keep working. Keep working. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I don't want to. Yeah, no, I just want to keep working because I already had those clients before. I had them when I was like 18, 19, 20. I worked with very big names and I don't really have a goal anymore because I know I, I had it. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I have my clients now and I just want to keep working. I'm 27, so I don't want to. I mean, I just want to keep working. That's, that's good enough totally understand. for me. Yeah. All right. Thanks for sitting down talking with me. You're welcome. All right.